Welcome to ProStitcher Tutorials. I'm Kim Sandberg. I want to show you one of my favorite things to do with ProStitcher, and that is edge-to-edge -edge designs. We're going to set up an edge-to-edge -edge design, quilt out the first row, and then we're going to advance with drag and drop. It's simple, easy, and fast. To get started, we need to set up an area. In the frame, I will move my machine over to the top left of my quilt. And I'm actually going to move a couple of inches off the edge. I will select from the ribbon the area tab. So we want to set up a two corner. So we'll click to start a two corner area. I'm going to touch my refresh button so you can see where that area point was dropped. And now I'm going to move my machine over to the bottom right corner. And I'm going to come about an inch off the edge of my quilt top. And we'll touch two corner again. And touch the refresh button. That looks pretty good. That's the width of my quilt. However, over here in the sidebar, you'll notice that the height is only 12.56 inches. This quilt top is actually 38 inches long. So I need to change that. It's pretty simple. We'll click right here in this box have this little keypad pop up. Let's touch the clear button and then type in 38 and enter, which will give me plenty of room to quilt out my entire design. Once again, let's select the re refresh button down here at the bottom so that we can see my entire area. Now it's time to open a design. From the tabs, let's choose file and design. Let's click on open so I can open my design library and we'll click on one PS designs and choose continuous line. I want to be sure and have a continuous line design all the way across my quilt. Now I'm looking for one here that's called Flutterbice. I want to do this quilt so it looks really cute with some fun little butterflies across it. So I'm going to select the design and click open. There's my design, it's loaded on the screen. Now we need to repeat the design. Let's select the repeat tab. And we have basic already chosen, which is what we want. And over in the sidebar, horizontal's chosen, that's where we want to start. And we're going to come down here and do this the quick and easy way. Let's select the fill button. And look at that, it filled my design. It looks fantastic. Now. We notice there's a little bit of space here around the outside. So we're going to use the stretch feature, which is right here in the sidebar. If I click stretch horizontal, you'll notice that it's stretched horizontally. Let's select vertical and let's do the same thing again and it'll stretch the design so it completely fills my area box. Well, I think that looks really great and I'm ready to start quilting. However, before you stitch, always save. That way if something comes up and you need to leave quickly, you have your design and your area saved, everything set up exactly the way you want it. Before saving, I always want a baseline. So from the quick access tools on the left hand side of the screen, let's click baseline and then we'll save. So to save a design, we'll select the file tab and choose save from the ribbon. Now I want to save my workspace. So from this drop down menu, we'll click on workspace. And then we want to give this a new name. So we'll click here and we'll have our keyboard pop up. I want to give this a different name. I already have a workspace saved as Kim. So we'll hit clear. And then let's call this one Flutterby. Because that's the name of the design. Looks good. When you're ready, after you've gotten your title in there the way you want it, click save. Now it's saved. I'm ready to start stitching. So we'll select the Pro Stitcher tab, select Quilt from the ribbon, and then come over to the sidebar and make sure we have Stitch selected. I have my tie-offs on, and I have my pull-up on, which will automatically pull up my bobbin thread. And I'm ready to start stitching. I'm going to move my machine so it's down in the neighborhood of the start point. When you're ready to start quilting, touch the run button. And we have our verify settings screen come up. 
do a quick scan through it and make sure that everything's turned on that you want. You'll notice that the features you want on are highlighted in green. Other features are red, which means they're off. Now down here at the bottom, there's a very important warning. It says make sure your needle is up. So take a second to check, make sure your needle's up. You don't want to tear a hole in your quilt. And when you're ready, click proceed. My designs just finished quilting out and now it's time to clip my threads and advance. I'm going to pull my thread here from the side, pull it out to the side, do a needle down, needle up, and pull back a few inches so that I can clip my bobbin thread at the same time I clip my top thread. Now we're ready for the advance. On the screen I'm going to touch this red box and close this long jump pause warning. So it's time to position our machine for an advance. I want to find a part on the design where maybe lines cross, stitching lines cross, it's at the bottom. Line it up and then drop my needle. I'm now ready to push the most important button in this entire process. In the quick access tools on the left hand side of the screen, touch drag. You'll notice when I do that, it turned green and it now says drop. It means that my design is now stuck to my crosshairs. And as we actually advance the machine and the quilt at the same time, the design is going to move with it. So the next step is I want to undo my clamps from both sides of my quilt. Lift my ratchet stops on the front two bars only, and then very carefully and gently, I'm going to advance my quilt. You'll notice that the machine moves just fine with it. I'm just gonna move nice and slowly, just enough so that I can fit my next row in my throat space. Now, I want to Take a moment and smooth everything out. I'm going to give my batting and my quilt top and my quilt back a little shake. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. I'm going to drop my ratchet stops again and just tighten them up a little bit. Put a little tension on that quilt top and on the quilt back, but not too much. We don't want any trampolining and I'm going to very carefully put my side clamps back on to give some of that side tension to the quilt. We'll do that on both sides. Make sure, once again, everything's smooth and flat. And I'm going to give the machine just a little wiggle to make sure that there's no tension right at the needle. It's not pulling on anything. And you'll notice on the screen, that my design has actually advanced up out of the area. And that's just fine. The area is just used initially to set up your design. We've now moved beyond it. It's not a problem at all. Now we're ready to touch that most important button again. We'll touch the drop button. Now that I've touched drop, my design is no longer attached to my crosshairs, which means I can raise my needle and move my machine and the design will stay put on the screen. Now it's time to base down the sides of the quilt. This is really important. Make sure you always take time to base down the sides of your quilt so that you keep, keep your quilt straight and square as you're quilting. This is where having the base button on the quick access tools 
is really handy. It makes it really easy. Come over here to the left side, and once again, I'll quickly pull up my bobbin and baste down the sides of my quilt. Do my needle down, needle up. Pull up my bobbin thread, clip my threads, and now I am ready to resume stitching. But there's one really important thing I need to do first. I need to turn off my base stitch. I'm gonna grab a hold of my top thread, touch the resume button, and the machine, machine will automatically move over to the side and pull that first stitch exactly where it belongs, and it will continue quilting. Wasn't that easy? Setting up an edge to edge design, advancing with drag and drop is a surefire way to finish all of your quilting projects.